Hey guys, Dr. Calkins. Today, uh, experiment 17. Experiment 17 is pH and all about pH. It's just basic chemistry uh, because of acids and bases. What's most important about this one is we didn't give a mini lecture because I knew this one would cover it in a little more detail than I could in a few minutes. Uh, and this one gives you hands-on practice all the while. What's unique about water in particular is it can react with itself to make ions. So water can be an acid and a base. It can be a hydrogen acceptor, make hydronium, can be a hydrogen donor, can make hydroxide. But when this happens, it happens equally, and that is equivalent to one times 10 to the negative 14. That's called KW, that's the auto dissociation constant for water. So if we split that in half, we're basically saying that one times 10 to the negative seven for hydronium, which is just a fancy version of acid and water, multiplied by hydroxide, which is also one times 10 to the negative seven. That equal amount of each is what we call neutral, and that's why water is neutral with a pH of seven. So as we convert that to uh, pH, we just need to remember that it's really the exponent that we're looking at, log is a base 10 function. It's gonna take that negative 14 and produce 14 by taking the negative away using a negative, by taking the power of 10 away by using log. We're gonna see that uh, in the video coming up. Just know that just like KW is one times 10 to the negative 14, pH and pOH, which is the variations of numerical values for those, it's gonna equal 14. So we can use all of these formulas here at the bottom in a chart to do some mathematical practice. And I'll also tell you how to use the specific TI-30X calculator from our syllabus. One thing to keep in mind is as you go up, the other goes down. So these are great definitions for your homework in particular, because if you're neutral, you're seven. And that's where KW starts. The hydronium is one times 10 to the negative seven. The hydroxide is one times 10 to the negative seven. That's a pH of seven. That's a pOH of seven. Notice as we become more acidic, our numbers get closer to one. As we become more basic, we would go in the opposite direction. Our number would be tinier and tinier and tinier and tinier for acid. But notice on the other scale, it's because our base is getting larger and larger and larger and larger, and it's getting closer to one. So it's like a teeter-totter. As one goes up, the other goes down. And pH is just a numerical way to represent these concentration numbers for acids and bases in a more meaningful way. Just remember that hydronium, H3O+, plus, and pH are related. Hydroxide is related to pOH, which is not on this chart, but we'll talk about it briefly as we go along. So pay attention to those acid-base definitions, and also pay attention to those concentration definitions. We'll get some practice of that in lab in a few minutes. So as we practice at the bottom of the page, think about how those numbers work together, and we're going to work through those uh, here in a minute. So notice two and 12 make our magic 14. That was one of our formulas from the previous page. But also notice that negative two was related to two. Negative 12 is related to the positive 12. That's our negative log calculations. Negative takes away the negative, log takes away the powers of 10, and that's what we're left with, really just the positive exponent value. Because the pH is less than two, we would consider ourselves acidic. So this is a perfect time to hit pause and try these next three. I'll walk you through one of those after you unpause, and then we'll move on. So I like these charts because you can check your work. We just remember that these two need to add to 14. And you can do a chart like this for any problem. Just plug in what they want. We'll show you a chart on the next page on how to solve all the others. It's also important that these make, uh, at least multiply, because when you multiply exponents, it's the same thing as addition that should be multiplied to the negative 14 as an exponent. So let's just do that over here. If we know these together need to make 14, think to yourself, what's missing? Can't do it in your head, just don't tell anybody. Uh, a nine and a five and a 14. But remember, these numbers are interrelated. So this two became a negative two for the exponent, this 12 became a negative 12. That's exactly what we're doing over here. Remember that pH and H3O plus are related, so those are both acid definitions. And what's important about this one would be one times 10 to the negative nine, 
capital M is just a concentration unit, we'll see it in uh, week 15. This would also be 1 times 10 to the negative 5, capital M, and notice those two make negative 14 as they should. Then apply the acid base definition. Well, the easiest definition that is used in all classes is pH. So pH is neutral at 7. And again, if we go up and look at our chart, up is acid, down is base. If we were 9, we were here. So definitely in that base kind of category. So this one is basic chemistry. It is basic. So again, uh, take a few minutes to try those other ones if you haven't already, and we're gonna move on to the next page. All right, as we're looking at page 115, we need to show you how to use the calculator from the syllabus. A couple that we're gonna use. We're gonna use the second button and X to the one. If you look at your calculator, that feature is right here. So you hit second, X to the one. You'll see that EE button. The EE button itself, that represents times 10 to the power of whatever we said. So whatever number we put in there is great. So we, it does the multiplication, it does the 10, and it does the power, all in one button. And that makes PEMDAS a whole lot nicer to look at. So again, it gives us a lot of information. The other button we're gonna use is the log button. That one's right beneath the second button, and notice the inverse log is right above it, we're using that one as well. So before we get too far, we need to show you how to put numbers in scientific notation because concentrations are tiny, oftentimes, and those are in scientific notation already. We haven't covered scientific notation. We'll do that in week 13, which is still two weeks away. We skipped that one at the beginning of the semester um, to put all the math at the end. So how do we put something like this in our calculator? Well, we do the 2.137. That's the easy part. So let me try to get the whole calculator in there. Pretty close. So 2.37 uh, or non first. 2.37. But now notice it's times 10 to the power of. So do a second. Notice it shows up when it's pressed. X to the 1. That E represents times 10 to the power of whatever we said. And we're going to say negative 4. And then we're going to add equal. There's our number in uh, floating format. It just means that it's floating in the screen because it can fit. So let's summarize that. What we do, we took 2.37. We hit our second button. We hit our next to the negative 1 button because above it was the EE button. We hit the negative button. Just be careful when you do this. Um, you want to hit negative. You don't want to hit subtract. Subtract will give you a syntax error on this calculator. And then we hit the number four. So those are the buttons associated with scientific notation that you'll use in the homework. Let's try it again. Put this number down here. So clear it out. Again, 5.75. Second, x to the one, negative three. It equals, notice it fits in the calculator just fine. This is normal mode, it's in degree mode as well, but uh, there's nothing else on the calculator whatsoever. If you want to switch back and forth, and maybe your calculator is already in scientific mode, you hit second, DRG. It's in the normal mode right now. If you wanted scientific mode, or if your calculator happened to be in scientific mode when you purchased it, your number would look like this. It's already in scientific notation. To switch it out, second, DRG, back to flow, hit enter, and it'll switch it back and forth. Notice if the number is super tiny, it might stay in scientific notation, that's because it can't fit in the screen. So to be able to do that, it's basically the same idea up here. We had hit 5.75, second, x to the negative one. That gives us our EE function. We hit the negative button, not subtract. And then we hit our three, which was our power. But after that, if we want to switch to the normal mode, we would hit our second button again, hit our DRG button, and then select flow. 
Low is from the menu itself, and then head equals, and it will switch it for you. Sometimes we have a big number, so let's type that big number in. 8.4, whoops, uh, 84, 58, 967. So there's our number. Notice our decimal is way down here, and that's the issue. Maybe you could skip back as many times you want to put it in scientific notation yourself, and that's perfectly fine. Or if you want to do it faster in your calculator, just do the reverse of what we just did, seconds, DRG, put it in scientific mode, it'll move the decimal, and it'll tell you the power of 10. And that's the fastest way to get the scientific notation without any work. So again, type in your number, uh, 8458967. But then hit seconds, the DRG button, go to the psi, mode, and then it equals. And that'll help you get in and out of those modes that are so important for a lot of what we're about to see. Biggest thing as we go on to remember, and I'll do this down here as just a short aside. Um, remember if we say something as 1 times 10 to the negative 7, not every student is good at numbers. That means 0 0.0000001. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7 faces back. So if we give a number like 1 times 10 to the negative 10, we would take this number and we would go 3 more back. That would be smaller. But if we take a number like 1 times 10 to the negative, say, 4, we would go take 3 of these powers away, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, our 1 would be there. And if we're going in that direction, we're going to be larger. So these are negative numbers. Pay attention to those. The bigger the negative number, the tinier we are, the smaller, the bigger we are. That'll help us in determining our position from this number. Because if this is acid and we're going up, that's more acidic. And if it's getting smaller, that's less acidic. Same thing for base. If this is base and we're getting bigger, that's more basic. This is less basic. So you have to be good at looking at those numbers. But also remember that these numbers are just four. They're just seven. They're just 10 if this were pH and if these were H3O plus. So we need to be good at recognizing those numbers and how they fit together. So what we need to do next is just a little bit of practice. And we got lots of that here. So what I'm gonna do first, and probably good for practice, is walk through each one of these and think, is it acidic or basic based on that definition of above seven, below seven, of larger than 10 to the negative seven or more. So let's do that for a couple of these and then I'll let you do the rest. So notice when we look at this number here, 3.98 times 10 to the negative 13, this is H3O plus. H3O plus is acid. So is this a lot of acid or very little? Remember neutral is time uh, 10 to the negative seven power, this is 10 to the negative 13, this is six zeros tinier, so this would be basic. Hydronium, hydronium is now in this case pretty much the same, just slightly uh, different in number but same in power, so it's still basic. Super tiny, that means there's a lot of base if there's so little acid. But notice this next one here is a number without a power. This is really just negative one, negative two. So this is 10 to the negative two power. This would be 1.2 times 10 to the negative two power. That's huge. It's very close to one compared to many other numbers. So this would be a city. As you look at other examples down lower, notice this is pH. And if that pH is less than seven, and in this case uh, it is, it would be a city. So take a few minutes to Determine acidic or basic, uh, pause the video and try that now. All right, so as we go through some of these, it's gonna be good to have page 117 handy. We're gonna use that chart at the top quite a bit and bounce back and forth quite a bit. It gives us all of our formulas around this uh, dark blue box, it tells us which steps to go when, and we just need to remember how to type it in our calculator. So as we look at number one, it says H3O plus, and what is pH? So if we have H3O plus and we need pH, let's go to the chart and see what they want. 
So if we have H3O plus, but we want pH, we need to go up. Up tells us just take negative log number. So let's do that. Just gotta remember how to do that, or at least show you how to do that in your calculator, since I haven't done that yet. Um, so again, it's gonna be in our calculator, pH equals negative log of our number, and then it equals, so it shows that on the calculator. So we'll turn it on, clear it out. All right, so negative button, log button, and then Our whole cup there. Again, not subtract, we need negative button. Negative button's down here. Uh, negative button, log button, and now we're looking for 3.98. 3.98. My fingers hit the wrong button. 3.98. Second, x to the 1. And now our power, which is negative 13. And then it equals. 1.24 times 10 to the 1. This is a problem for us because it looks like 1.24. My calculator is in scientific mode. It's better to keep it out. So I'm going to take it out. Second DRG flow. The answer is 12.4. So in this case, negative button, log button, and then scientific notation. Let's try another one. And then I'll give you a chance to try a few uh, afterwards. So H3O plus again, but now they want pOH. So let's look at our chart one more time. Our chart says we have H3O plus, we need pOH. So we have two ways to get there. We can either go through this gigantic mess and then go up, or we can go up and then go over. And subtracting 14 is a whole lot easier than this mess, so let's just go up and then over. So we need to do a negative log number, just like we did a moment ago, and then we need to subtract 14. So again, pH, not pOH, is negative log of our number. It equals whatever this is. We'll take 14 and subtract it, and that'll give us pOH. Let's do that in our calculator. So clear it out. Negative button, log button, our number, 1.26 seconds, x to the 1, negative 13. In your homework, this is probably an answer. Just don't get excited. It's not the one we want. This is 12.8 for a pH, 12.9 rounded up. So what I'm going to show you is a fast way. You could just write this number down, subtract 14, but you could take 14, subtract, if you do second negative, that's the answer we just had. And then we'll get the answer we want, which is 1.1. 1 .1. So, let's This was that 12.9 uh, kind of number. We got it. Number three, we have hydronium, we want hydroxide. So back to our little square chart. We have hydronium, we want hydroxide, we need to go to the right. To the right means take Kw and divide by H0 plus. So we need to take 1 times 10 to the negative 14 and then divide by our number. So what does that look like in our calculator? So again, clear it out. 1 second x to the 1, negative 14 divide by our number, and because we used all of uh, the x and negative one buttons, we don't need parentheses anywhere. If you do use multiply and 10 and rooftop, you're gonna get uh, in a situation where it's uh, pretty messy. So we're doing it the safe way. Take our number 0.012, put it on the bottom, and it equals 8.33 times 10 to the negative 13. Capital M is just a concentration unit, it's long for the ride.
So I'm going to give you a moment to try 4, 5, and 6. It's very similar, just using hydroxide instead of hydronium. But look to the previous three on some help on how to do those. So do that now. All right, we're going to jump to the bottom, try three more, and then let you do the last three, uh, much like the top. So here they say pH is 6.55. What is pOH? Remember, those are opposites. One goes up, the other must go down. Let's look at our chart. We have pH. How do we get pOH? We just subtract 14. It's going to be the easiest one we've done this entire lab exercise. Just take 14 and subtract 6.55. Use your fingers and toes if you have to. Um, but again, 7.4. And notice 7.45 for a pOH is on the other side of 7, so it still is acidic because this is pOH. This is pH, which is less than 7, and that's still acidic. So no matter which definition we use, whether it's up here or up here, the definition should be the same. It's just multiple ways of thinking about the same number. Let's try two more. The pH is 11.8, so we have this acid definition 11.8, that should tell us already that this is much, much higher than seven, so that's basic. They want hydronium, which is acid concentration, that's gonna be pretty small, because again, it's basic. So let's look at our chart. We have pH, uh, we want H3O plus. So we have pH, we want H3O plus, so we need to go down. So in our calculator, up was negative log number. To go down, it's second log negative number. So let's use this in our calculator, 10 to the negative pH under one of our formulas. So we need 10 to the negative 11.8. So that number goes here. Show what that looks like in your calculator. Just the inverse log button. So clear it out. Second log. Notice it looks just like our formula. We just need negative 11.8, not subtract, and not a 5. So now we're ready. So 1.58 times 10 to the negative 12. And notice there, this number is super tiny. It's going to have 11 zeros. That's why if acid is super tiny, you're going to be basic. Number 9. Number nine says pH, which is the acid definition, 1.62, that's super low, so acidic. Probably had that from earlier, hopefully. They want hydroxide, let's look at our chart one more time. pH to OH negative, that's on opposite corners. So you have two choices. Do exactly what we just did and then go through that messier portion, or cut to the chase and subtract 14 first and then drop down like we just did, which is easier because subtraction is easier than this division. So because we're in the wrong scale, this is OH, we need POH, we're going to subtract 14. So 14 subtract 1.62 is first. That goes right across the top of that table uh, for this one. And that should give us our 12.38. This is now POH because this was pH. Now POH and OH can talk to each other do the exact same thing we just did. So 10 to the negative 12.38 should finish this one off. Sometimes I take two steps. Uh, your textbook doesn't give you POH or any kind of OH stuff, but I like it because it speeds things up dramatically. Not having to go through KW all the time. So again, here we are at uh, 10 to the power of, so that's second log. Notice it looks just like our formula. Negative, not subtract, 12.38. 4.17. Look all the way down there. A lot of students like to forget it. All the way down there, you get 10 to the negative 13. That's super tiny because if we're strongly acidic, we shouldn't have much base at all. And this is almost non existent base. So take a few minutes to try the next three, and we'll come back. All right, so remember this top chart is our friend. Uh, just remember you can't go across the square. It's kind of like a shark. You try to go through it, it's going to bite your finger. You have to go around or around, never through the middle. And we can use this again down below. Down below is our same kind of beakers as before. We just have tougher numbers. So if we have tougher numbers, that just means we're going to have to use your calculator 
on the nut or head. So we're going to do beaker A and beaker C, and then we'll let you do the rest. All right, so here we are at beaker A. Remember a few things to keep in mind. These two, uh, POH and PH, those need to make 14. So make sure those always add up. You can do that for any beaker A, uh, beaker B. Remember this works vertically. Also remember that pH is related to H3O+, plus. those are acids, and obviously it's a little bit more obvious is POH and OH are related through bases. So just make sure you're tying the right row to the right row. It's also true that these two should make uh, one times 10 to the negative 14 when you multiply. Our calculators are incapable of actually doing that. So for example, uh, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then we go 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. That's as close as our calculator can get. So negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, negative 12, 13, 14. This would be 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Round it up. It's just that our calculator can't round. So oftentimes these are going to look like 1 times 10 to the negative 15, not negative 14, just because our calculator's inability to round. So be prepared to see that um, as we start doing this math in the calculator. So if we have 1.75, we need to remember that they need to make 14, so let's take 14 and subtract 1.75. That's basically going up here and saying pH over to POH, subtract 14. When we do that in our calculator or in our head, we get 12.25. Working down, remember down in our calculator would be pH down to H3O plus. So that would be second log negative number. So let's do that down here. Just remember to go from pH to H3O plus, pOH to, P, uh, to OH negative. So this is really just 10 to the negative 1.75, because that's the pH. This is really just 10 to the negative 12.25, because that's pOH. So all we've done is went down on both sides to get to the bottom. OH and H0 plus. This is why I like the chart, because you can remember the calculator buttons as well as the order we need to go in. So when you do this for your calculator, uh, again, that would be second log negative number, and you'll get 1.78 times 10 to the negative 2, capital N. For this one, you'll get 5.62 times 10 to the negative 13, capital N. So notice in these answers, we're getting that 14 that we want, and we're getting what looks like 1 times 10 to the negative 15 because our calculator can't really round like it's supposed to to get that 1 times 10 to the negative 14 perfect kind of number. I always like the pH definition because that's when you're going to see in physiology and biology classes, this is less than 7, so this is acidic. So take a minute to try beaker A and beaker B on top and bottom using that idea, and you can do that now. Alright, so let's try a beaker C, beaker D vertical column because they're a little bit different. So I'm going to zoom in to C and then I'll let you try the rest in this lab just about done. So this column here uh, is H3O plus, OH negative, POH, and pH. I just want to have to zoom out. So when you have H3O plus, it might be easier to go back up to pH. So if we have H3O plus, we want to go to pH. So let's look at our chart. H3O plus needs to go up to pH, so in this case, we want negative log number. So negative log number is up our chart and up this chart. Down, what we did earlier was second log negative number in our calculator and on the chart. So remember to keep things straight. We're going to go up to the pH column. This is going to be negative log, same as how we type it in the calculator. 2.09 times 10 to the negative 5. It equals 
you'll get 4.68. But as soon as we do that step, now we're back to basically a beaker A, beaker B kind of problem because we know that these need to make 14. So let's just do what's easier, and that's 14 subtract 4.68. If it equals, we get 9.32. And if we can do that, we can do exactly what we did on the other beaker and bring this down, and it's going to be 10 to the negative 9.32. If you wanted to check your work here, you could do 10 to the negative 4.68, you get that answer back. If it equals, you get 4.79 times 10 to the negative 10. Notice these numbers looking like that negative 15 that we want. Power of 10, again, it can't make one times to the negative 14 because it can't round up. So don't be scared by that. And then also these make 14. Easiest way to define it is to look at pH. That's the one that's used in physiology and biology classes. 4.68 is less than seven, just like 1.75 was in the beaker. So that's still acidic. So remember, the chart is your friend. So use it, just don't go through the middle. You have to go around the edges. Remember how to use the calculator buttons. And then now give yourself a shot at beaker C and beaker D. And then this lab is finished. See you next time.